Hello and welcome to this first video lecture in the series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Shevrestad from the University of Skövde. Uh, what we will look at in this lecture series is uh, some different configuration tasks that you can do to Windows Server 2016 to have backup, DHCP, remote apps, Active Directory, file services and more. But for this lecture we are going to start with a freshly installed Windows Server 2016 and we're just going to look at some of the post installation tasks that you want to do to a server and have a short overview of what you see on screen now, the server manager, which is the server control and configuration tool that is uh, pre-installed on any Windows Server 2016 that you install with the graphical user interface. Uh, so what we're going to do first is to look into some post-installation tasks like nick teaming and setting a proper name and static IP addressing. Um, and what we see here is the dashboard of the server manager and to control and look at local server, this machine, we have to click local server in the upper left corner. Uh, and when we do that, we will have an overview of the local server that we're looking on. So if you look at the upper left, you can see the computer name, you can see what domain or worker it belongs to. Uh, looking to the right, we have some information about Windows updates and Windows Defender and stuff like that. Uh, and looking at the, at the bottom panes, we have some extractions from the event viewer, which would be quite good to have a look at, but we're not going to care about that. We also have a listing of the services that are installed and the sta status of those. Uh, so let's begin with just renaming it, because w whenever we're working with the server, it's quite convenient to have a name that follows some sort of naming policy. So maybe we have a naming scheme that says that every server should be named uh, S and operating system, so maybe S, Windows, and a role, uh, something like that. Uh, at least something that we can remember uh, uh, instead of what it's named right now, which is win-q270e something something. That's not very intuitive. So to rename the server, we simply click the name up here uh, in the upper left. We then click the change button, and then we can in uh, input the name that we want to have. So for demonstration purposes, I will just call this server. Uh, and then hit OK. Now for this to take effect, I will need to restart the machine. Uh, I'm not going to do that in the middle of this demonstration, so I'm just going to hit OK, then close, restart later, and this will take effect when we get back for the next demonstration. Um, in addition to having a computer name that's easy to remember, it's also nice and usually needed to have an IP address that we can know about. Uh, remember that you can either statically assign IP addresses to a computer or have it take an IP address from a DHCP server on the network. When we use DHCP, uh, we get one uh, available IP address from some IP pool and that it creates a case where our server can have different IP addresses at different times and we don't want that. We want it to have an IP address that we know so that we can uh, easily access it. So the way that we can change an IP address is that if we look a little bit further down here at the upper left we see Ethernet 0 which is listing our network card and we also see IPv4 address assigned using DHCP. And if we click there, we get to the network connections interface and we see our network interface card. We can right click that and take properties. And then in the listing that we find, we go to IP, IP version, version, version 4 or Internet Protocol version 4. We hit properties and then instead of obtaining an IP address automatically, we hit use the following IP address. And then we input the IP address that we want. So in my case, that is 10, no, 10, 209, uh, 3.100. And the submit mask, I need this 255, 255, uh, 2550. And the default gateway is going to, in this case, be the first IP address in this subnet, which is 10, 209, 31. Um, so that's basically it. We also need a DNS server. So in my case, I'm going to use 10.0.252.100 and then hit OK and close. So now we have a static IP address assigned to this machine. Uh, and then we also, uh, it's easier for us to know where to find this machine. Another thing I want to just briefly look into is Windows updates. Um, so you can see here, 
uh, in the right on the right side of this top pane that we never install Windows Update to this machine, which is because it's a fr freshly uh, freshly installed machine. And if we click Windows Update or Download Updates Only here, uh, just after the label Windows Update, then we get to the control center where we can. Uh, control Windows Update and something that may be reasonable for a lab machine is to not check for updates at all because we want to do the lab real quick but if we're in a production environment you should know that updates contain security patches, uh, performance, uh, increasing patches and so on and so forth so you should make sure that you stay on top of your Windows Update to make sure that you always have the latest protection. But as we know, Microsoft some sometimes do uh, hiccups with the updates, so maybe it's a nice idea to have the setting that I have right now, which is download uh, updates only, uh, and then manually select when to install them. So in that case, what we can do is that we can go read up a little bit on the updates before we have them installed on our machine. Uh, so let's get away from here. And the next thing I want to show you is Nick teaming. I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, on that, but what Nick teaming basically is that is is that we can bundle a number of network interfaces. So we can use a number of network cards as one, uh, and and when we do that, we can have our server connected uh, to one single switch using uh, more than one cable, and that is of course good for performance reasons. And the way that you would configure Nick teaming is that you look just about where we clicked when we changed the IP address and you see Nick teaming which is currently disabled you can click there and you will get a dialog where you see a listing of your different network interfaces and you can actually team them together so you can right click here uh, on the network card that you have and you can say add new team if you have a bunch of network interfaces you can add them all to the same team and you can configure them to work as one. You do the same configuration at the switch and then you have several network interfaces working as one for better performance. That also co creates a layer of redundancy. So if one of the network cards were to fail, then your server would still be able to be online using the other network cards in that team. So with that said, let's have a overview of the server manager, which is basically where you reach everything from. So we've already been discussing this pane where you look at the local server. Uh, there is also uh, the dashboard where you see your roles and your server groups and your server features and all of that. Uh, so when you're working with Windows Server, everything is made, made up from roles and features. So roles and features are basically roles that the server can assume. So when you install a server, it's basically a computer, but maybe you want it to be a file server, maybe you want it to be a web server, maybe you want it to be an Active Directory server. All of those different roles and features are available from manage and add or remove roles and features. So this is where you add new capabilities to your server. Uh, looking to the right of the manage, we have the tools, and the tools is basically where you access the interfaces of the rules and features that are installed to this server. So if we want to make this uh, machine an Active Directory server, what we would do would be go to manage, then we would click add rules and features, we would get this wizard where we can, that we can go through, uh, in the first we uh, in the first dialog here we get some information we then get some information about whether we want to do role based or feature based installation or if we want to do a remote desktop services ins uh, installation i'm not going to go through this in detail right now so we just click next then we get some information about or we get to select what server we want to install to because we can actually use the server manager instance of one computer to control all the servers in our environment. Uh, in this case we only have one so we would click next then we would get a listing of all the different services uh, server roles that we can have. So in this case if we want to uh, install something maybe we want to do a DHCP server so we would click that. We would click add features here I'm not going to do it uh, in, uh, right now and then we would click next. We can also select features here so maybe we want to install BitLocker drive encryption or we want to uh, install, I don't know, uh, a client for NFS or whatever. We can select that here and click next. Uh, once we installed something, 
we can go to tools and find the appropriate interface for it. So if I were to install a DNS or DHCP server, I would get a tool here for managing that, which is something that we will go through in the next lessons. Um, so that's the most important part of the server manager, the manage and the tools, but also the server manager in itself provides a nice overview of what you have installed. So for instance, you can see here that I have file and storage services installed. I can do so, I can have a quick look at the event view uh, event log entries that corresponds to the service. I can do have a performance look and so on and so forth. And uh, you see that I also have the same type of windows for the local servers and all servers that are in this uh, inside of the server manager. So if I look at local services, there is a red flag here for services, and red usually indicates that something is. Uh, is down and if I click that you can see that there is uh, some service here that is called maps broker that has been stopped and that is apparently bad I actually have no idea what this service does so I will just not care about it but this is a little bit about how the server manager works and um, if you have more service in here you can look at all servers and you can have uh, an extraction of the events that uh, Windows things you should know about for your different servers. You have a listing of your different services. Uh, you can do a best practice an analysis to have some information about the performance of your server. Uh, you can see some CPU usage for your servers, memory utilization, and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do before we end is to just show you that something that you can do with Windows Server 2016 is to enable or disable the graphical user interface. And as you realize, having a graphical user interface or GUI is quite nice for configuration and manageability purposes, but maybe for performance and security you want to disable it at some point. And you can do this by going to Manage, and in this case we want to remove something, so we go Remove Roles and Features, and then we have the same dialog as we had when we wanted to add something, so we just click Next. We're gonna do it to this server, so we click Next. And the graphical user interface is not a server role. The server role is usually something that uh, that you could um, hand out to the network. So uh, server roles like D DNS, Active Directory, web server, and so on and so forth. Um, the graphical user interface is a feature, and the feature is usually something that is local to this server, how this server behaves in itself. Uh, so if we look through the listing here, we see checkboxes in everything that is installed to the server so we see that we have SMB file sharing support we have Windows Defender features we have Windows PowerShell and we have um, we should see where we have the graphical user interface Okay, maybe it's not here, so instead we will remove something else that I have to install later on. Let's move, remove the PowerShell ISC, and uh, just to show you how you remove something. Then, then you click Next, and then you have this confir confirmation where you click Remove, and then you go about waiting. I'm not going to do this. This was just a short overview of the Windows Server post installation tasks that you may want to do and a short uh, overview of the server manager interface. When we get back, we're going to explore different topics like DHCP server, DNS, Active Directory, uh, group policy objects, and more. And I hope you stay with me throughout the rest of this series of video demonstration. Uh, thanks for now and see you next time.